Hello and welcome back to On the Workbench. Today we're taking a look at the Astro Pneumatic Spray Gun. This is the red handle 1.8 millimeter nozzle uh, number 4008 uh, spray gun. I got this recently so I could be able to try to paint a door for the inside of my house. And this was very well reviewed on Amazon. In fact, it was the Amazon Choice. And so I wanted to buy a spray gun. Uh, this is what I went with. There was a lot of good reviews. And so let's open the box and see what you get with this. It comes taped and sealed up. So a couple of the specs to go over here. The nozzle side 1.8 millimeters. Operating PSI 50 to 60. Um, quarter inch NPT. Just as air consumption 7 to 12 CFM with an, a compressor size of about 3 horsepower or so. And so with the tape cut to the little tab Let's open this up and see what you get in the box. There we go. So out of the box we get a card that all repairs must be sent to Astro Pneumatic Tool Company. In other words, they don't want you sending this back to wherever it is that you bought it. They want to make sure they keep good reviews. You get a wrench bagged separately. We've got a warranty registration card. We have a quick setup guide and user manual. And then we have the tool itself. So at the very bottom is the paint cup. This is a metal paint cup. It's got tabs on either, or little brass tabs on either side. And then on the gun, the first thing you'll notice is there's actually no connection valve. So to fix that, I've already bought a, H, a high flow quarter inch NPT nozzle that should thread on there. I'll set that up aside. I'm surprised it doesn't actually come with a nice little cover over this just to protect that air inlet there. Then at the bottom, there is a strainer that goes around, looks like that's removable over the intake or the uptake to the gun. It's an interesting filter. It's actually got, it's kind of sharp on the edges there. And then that comes up and this is where the paint uh, cup would then attach on. Then we've got one hose here. That's going to provide just some extra ventilation coming up, out. And then obviously when you spray and pull the trigger, it's going to then uh, basically be using a uh, Venturi effect. It will suck the paint up the tube and then blow it out the gun. So then there's the nozzle there. And so this should clip and seal on something like that. And then this is actually loose here on top and needs to get tightened down. But if I don't have it tightened down, I just remove it. Let's see what we get. And so then this threads off. And so you theoretically could have a couple different paint cups and seal that off. And so you can take the gun apart for cleaning. You've got the connection here. You've got a hook at the top to hold it on. Then you've got a couple other control nozzles uh, to be able to control the airflow and the pattern. And so then you can adjust this to be able to spray a wider, then you can adjust the nozzle here to be able to spray a wider or a taller pattern. So that comes off and then you get our nozzle here. Again, quick access to make sure we get this all nice and clean after our use. You'll notice it is printed very large there, made in China. They're not trying to hide that fact at all. And then if we take the rear out here, this should get us to the needle. There's our spring. And then here is our needle. Again, this all comes apart for cleaning. Put that back together.
So we can obviously take this apart to clean, and then at the tip of the nozzle here, there is a 1.8 that's raised on top there. It's etched just ever so slightly. Maybe you can see it, maybe you can't on camera there, just so you can have that as quick reference. Astra also makes this gun available in black. From what I could tell, the only difference was actually the color of the handle, and the black one was about $20 more. As for me, and, and this specialty tool here, since I've got a toolbox full of wrenches, I'm not sure I'm going to have much of a use for that. We'll set that aside. And then now to go with this, I got a couple other accessories. Uh, the first, I also got a oil and water separator, just to make sure there is no water in my line, so I don't have any water contaminating my paint or anything else, just to keep it nice and clean. And so I'm... We'll add that to the line. And then I also got uh, a 190 micron filter so I can pour my paint through the filter to make sure the paint is all nice and clean. There's no clumps actually in the paint cup. And so you can get a whole stack of these off of Amazon ridiculously cheap. I'm going to store these in a Ziploc bag. This packaging here is obviously going to come apart when I open it up to use it. But I'll put those in a Ziploc bag to keep those nice and clean. And so now i got to put this all together, and then I'll show you how this works in just a moment on the next part of this video. Now that you've just seen the product unbox and the various other accessories I have with it, let me show you the assembled uh, setup for the product here. So I've got a three-foot whip hose here. At the end is my water separator. Make sure the air going in is nice and dry. There's no humidity in there. Relief valve here. So the, water, so the air goes through here. It has to go out of sponge. And around before coming back in the hose, I'll keep the air dry. This hose has never been used with any lubricated air tools. So I've got that to isolate that from the rest of my air system. And then that just goes into the gun here. Now one thing of note here on this uh, whip hose here, you can get them with either male, uh, typically with female, female, or male, male ends. I was able to find a male, female combination. And this is the one that actually has a slight ball valve on the end of it here. I'm not sure that was necessary, but... That's what I was able to find locally that had uh, a male-female connection, so I didn't have to add an extra connection to get this all put up, because I want to have as few connections as possible to minimize chances of air leaks. So now, let's set up the tool and put the paint in, and let's put this to the test and see how it works. With my paint cup clean, I'm going to use one of these paint filters that I bought. This is 190 micron, and I'm going to put that in, and I'm going to pour my paint through that, to make sure that I've got a nice clean paint, give it a nice, all shaken up here. And so then I'm going to pour my paint through the funnel. This is a cabinet and door trim Dutch Boy latex paint. Put that in and let it filter through. And we can see it going down through the funnel. It's going to take a little bit of time for it to get through. I want to make sure that the product going into my paint canister is going to be as clean and pure as I can get. So I know this is the boring part, but I think it's a necessary step to get our end product the way we want it. Now I should add on this Dutch Boy can, when I look at its instructions, it indicates that, it's that it should work with uh, 0.15 to 0.19 tip, uh, although it does say with a brush, I'm sorry, with an airless sprayer, 2,000 PSI. So this is slightly a different setup than there, but my nozzle is larger than that, so hopefully that'll work. And the other Amazon reviews, it indicated that this works with latex paint, and so we're going to give this a shot. This is Green Envy, and I'll do this about 1 to 10, give or take. And I'm just going to add some of the paint thinner to the paint. 
until I get to approximately my 1 to 10 marking inside the can, which is actually not actually there uh, from the factory. This is something I kind of added. So we'll be about there. And now it's time to start in the paint thinner. With the paint strained and filtered into the cup, now it's time to attach this to the paint gun. And just put this down. And latch her up. Moving the ceiling lever all the way over. It's also important at this point to make sure your compressor is filled up with air and that it is set to no more than 40 PSI as that is the recommended maximum working pressure. So to show you the project I'm working on here, I've got this louvered door. And the reason why I'm trying to spray this is obviously there's so much surface area at these louvers, it would be next to impossible to get this by hand and the right shade of matching house paint or trim paint for the doors does not come in a spray can. So I could either brush this and get brush strokes or I could try to spray this on with my air compressor. So here we go. So here's the final product of the door, all painted up. I think it turned out really well. No major problems with it. And one thing you, you do have to pay attention to is the paint will be just a little bit more matte as a result of the thinning process, but I got the door perfectly exactly the way that I want it. So to wrap this up on this video here, I've now had this uh, sprayer for another, it's been about six months since I uh, shot the earlier part of the video and had a chance to use this on a few more products so I can give you a more thorough review of this here. And it's actually worked remarkably well. I've had a few issues of having to adjust the knobs here to get the flow correct and to kind of dial that in each time. I've been very meticulous at the end taking this apart and trying to clean it. One issue that you may see here, this little tube has come off. It's supposed to be stuck here and it's, that's just repeatedly keeps coming off. I'm not sure that that's really been that big of a deal, but it's worked well. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, because of having to thin out the paint, a glossy finish may look a slightly more matte and a slightly different color, but uh, my wife has not been able to notice any noticeable differences. I take this apart, you can see how this has gotten a little dirty. I've tried to clean it up as best as I can. The screen comes apart here, this comes off, so you can clean it up and scrub it up, trying to keep it clean, but there still gets some latex uh, scrub in here. So I've only used this with latex paint so the can, I think, has gotten eh, maybe just slightly a little bit oblonged. Not that big of a deal, but still seals up well. I did have one issue where the rubber gasket here actually popped off with it. That just got set right back down. No big deal. It was very simple to fix. I also had to use a toothpick to open up the little vent hole here to keep all the siphoning going. And one of the things I've been able to do with this, I was very surprised. Uh, very pleasantly surprised with is I was able to keep painting this actually for about a week. There was one time when I was using this that I, I it was probably just shy of seven days between actually picking up the gun and using it again. Sitting in my garage I was able to just kind of shake up and mix the paint and then use a wire brush uh, on the end nozzle to go back and I was able to get right back to painting and I held the paint pretty well so this clearly seals well. 
I'm very pleased with it in terms of being able to shoot latex paint, which is kind of one of those operations that you're not supposed to do. And that's not really an official use of this gun, but it works. And at the end of the day, I think that is kind of a big deal. Now, I've not done anything major like an entire house wall. I don't think this would be the product at all for doing like an entire wall of your house instead of rolling it or getting one of the airless sprayers for that. But for being able to paint uh, baseboard, doors, or other bits of trim work for your house, I think it's worked just fine. Maybe you could get away with like a picket fence with this. There's definitely overspray that comes off. You got your nozzle and the spray pattern that you can adjust if you want the fan pattern to be more vertical like this or turn it and make it 90 degrees so that the pattern is more left to right or any uh, difference in between. But overall, this has worked well and so I'm very pleased with this product from Astro Pneumatic, not sponsored by this. If you're inter interested in this gun, I'll put a link in the video below. You can find this on Amazon. That is an affiliate link that helps support the channel. And I've found this, the whip hose here uh, has worked well. This gives me just some extra length. And this hose is clean. It's not dirty with grease. So if it has touched a, pro a, a project, as you can see by some of the paint actually on it, I'm not actually getting grease or some other dirt that's on the rest of my air hose line onto the project. It's just a relatively clean air hose whip line. And so I think I'd probably encourage you to do the same thing. The oil and water dryer. I've been using this with the high flow fittings. I think that's worked well. I've not actually tried this with the normal fittings, um, but I'm not sure that would make that big of a difference with this. I just thought that would help increase as much airflow capacity through the gun for just trying to get uh, all the air out. And if you ever have a moment where you feel like you're pulling the trigger and nothing's coming out, which has happened to me a couple times, Chances are something got plugged up somewhere on the needle at the end. So just a paper clip or something that I'd like to be able to clean that up or you might have to take it off. But that only happened to me a couple of times and I think I was just putting out too much volume of paint relative to the air. Because other times I was able to keep paint uh, just fine in this uh, contraption here without actually having to take it all apart and seal it up and put it away like you're probably supposed to do. And so that was kind of more just a trial by fire and it worked great. So I'm very pleased with this. And if you get any other questions, put in the comments below. I'll try to respond to your questions or comments on that. But that's my thoughts and wrapping up on the Astro Pneumatic 4008 spray gun uh, when used with latex paint. Uh, one quick caveat, caveat before I go, the door that you saw that had primer on it, that was sprayed on with a spray can that was not used with this. I have not used this with primer. My gut instinct is probably this would not work well with primer. Uh, primer is definitely thicker than latex paint, uh, but you can get primer in any color, usually gray, in just a regular spray can. So that kind of negates the need for this. This is better for your finish work. And with that, we'll call that a day on this video. And have a great day. Bye.